What up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 60. Let's get that. There we go. Day 60 of Autodesk Fusion. Today, what I'm going to take is my automata. We got so far with our follower rods and our crankshaft. Uh, we're going to make our cams and then put our cams on the crankshaft. And we're going to call that done for this video today. So if you need to figure out how to do the crankshaft joints with the follower rods, check out the next video. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, since this is going to be a bottom-up design, I'm going to find a new design, or click on new design, and then create a sketch. So the first hex, uh, our first cam that we're going to do is, let's just do a circle cam. Now, uh, my inside diameter of my hole is going to be a quarter inch, because that's the diameter of my crankshaft. And then, let's do just another outside circle for... Um, by outside diameter of that. So that way when I extrude this, we have a cam that has uh, just a circle cam. Now the, the point of a circle cam does absolutely nothing, but it is a wonderful explanation of saying anything that varies from the circle cam will cause a motion. And so if we see what doesn't cause motion, just a circle cam, any variation of that, it's kind of easier to understand um, how that motion happens. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and hit A on my keyboard for appearance, and we're going to make this uh, white. Just to do a nice white color so people can see it easier. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. A Williams uh, Circle Can. Alrighty. We're going to go ahead and go on to the next design. I can go ahead and close out of that Circle Can since it's done. Uh, and let's go ahead and make our next one. Our next one's going to be an eccentric cam. So we still start off with our center circle of uh, a quarter inch, but then our outside diameter, we still have a circle, but it doesn't originate at zero, zero. It originates at some other distance. And so uh, it's a little bit offset. So we're going to go ahead and just finish that up. Hit E for extrude, and we're going to extrude this a quarter inch. Looking good. Click OK. And then what I'm going to do is hit A on my keyboard, and we're going to make this appearance. Let's make it, let's do green. Alrighty, find a green that we like. And we are good to go. Go ahead and save this. And we're going to call it A. Williams. And this eccentric cam. Now I am making these cams quite quickly. I have another video earlier uh, in my days of fusion where we went through each cam specifically and looking at parametric constraints. Uh, if you want to, you can watch those videos. Um, they are more of a longer in-depth explanation. But for this one, I'm just going to start blowing right through them. Okay, the eccentric cam is done. Let's do another one. Uh, let's do this one. Let's do a uh, hex cam. So what I'm going to do is click on create, polygon, and by default, it's, it is a hex cam. So let's go ahead and stick with a, let's do a one inch hex cam. Inside diameter is a quarter inch. Finish sketch. Go ahead and extrude this out, quarter inch. Go ahead and change my uh, appearance. Let's make this one blue. Alrighty, and there we go. We're looking good, folks. Go ahead and save this. So we'll A. Williams hex cam. Alrighty. And then last one I'm going to do very quickly is the snail cam. I'm going to do the cheater snail cam. If you want to watch that other video, I do a very in-depth snail cam on um, how to do it correctly, including parametric constraints. But for this one, I'm going to kind of cheat my way through it. And here's how I'm going to do that. So I've got my inside circle of a quarter inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of construction lines. So this line here, let's make it 1.5 inches. Okay, and then a right click, construction. Let's do another line going out to the right at 1.25. We're going to bring in just a little bit of the first line. And then we're just going to keep on going on. So this is going to be one inch. Right click, construction, and then the last one is going to be 
0 0.75 inches. Go ahead and right click and make that a construction line. The last piece that I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do a second line and we're going to make this, it's going to be a half inch, 0 0.5. Uh, and that way, when I'm making this thing, it's going to continually spiral outwards, but increase in size. Make that a construction line, and we're good to go. Alrighty. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do it. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a, a three-point arc. So I'm going to do top, bottom here, and then I want the arc to go through this point. And this is just a really quick way to kind of get that snail-like motion. And then we're going to do the same thing, top or bottom, top. And then the third point is then that other snail cam. Draw a line from top to bottom. Boom, there we go. We're increasing that radius the entire time. We're going to click Finish Sketch. And everything looks good. Hit E on my keyboard. We're going to extrude this quarter inch. A, we're going to do for appearance, and this one we're going to do yellow. See if we can get a, can we get a nice yellow. Let's try that again. Let's try, there we go. That's looking good. So we're going to save this. A Williams snail can. All right, we're looking good on time. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take each of those cams and I'm going to throw them in my design. So we've got our eccentric cam, click OK, click and drag, we've got our circle cam, click OK. We have our hex cam, let's go ahead and bring that in here, click OK. And we have our snail cam. Last but surely not least, I double clicked, I meant to drag and drop, there we go. Alrighty. Now this is looking alright so far. I don't need this data pane anymore, so I'm actually going to close that out so I can see what we're dealing with just a little bit easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our joint constraints. Now, since the sidewalls of this box are actually in my way right now, we can deactivate those. And that way, when I'm starting to click on stuff, I know I'm clicking on what I want to click on. So let's do join. Let's go ahead and capture that position. Let's join the center of the circle cam with the center of that axle. This is going to be a rigid constraint again because we want the cam to spin with the axle. And so we're going to go ahead and bring that over. Let's just line it up under the first follower rod and that looks okay. All right, so it's going to go and continue on. Let's just do it for the other ones. The center of the eccentric cam with the center of that. Look at okay, bring it over just a hair, line it up all right, click okay. All right, and let's do two more and then we'll call it done on this video. Making sure you're clicking on the actual circle. If you notice I clicked on something a little odd and funky, I immediately escaped and then uh, clicked on what I was supposed to click on. Go ahead and line that up, that looks okay. And then the last one, but surely not least, we're going to join the center of that with, let's see if I run into problems there. Yeah, it's running into little problems with what I'm clicking on exactly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to find, if I can, there we go, find that center. I use the center of the cam, uh, or sorry, the crankshaft, because I did that symmetrical extrusion. It knows where the middle is. At least I believe I did a symmetrical extrusion. It's been a few days. All right, everything looks okay. Um, what you can do is here, if you need a specific angle or specific offset, you can rotate this kind of around as you need um, or kind of change its placement. There we go. Uh, that way it will have a, a certain position for you want it to be in. You can edit this later on, and if anything, um, I might do some edits downstream and show you how to do that. So I'm going to click OK. And we have our four cams installed. Now to make sure we know that we did this correctly, let's see if we did right click and let's go ahead and animate that model. Let's try that again, right click, animate model. And what we see here 
is that the circle cam is spinning even though it's doing nothing. Um, and then we have our eccentric cam, our hex cam, and the snail cam all working. So to make sure that we really know what we're doing, let's go ahead and make those other pieces visible and we can see our cams in motion inside the box. Alrighty guys, that'll be it for today's video. Tomorrow I'm gonna hop on and take the follow rods and uh, join them to the cams to where they do uh, kind of what we expect them to do. Alrighty guys, that's it and I'll catch you on the next video.